So next up in my weapon videos is going to be Layla. Layla is of course very in demand due to her being the primary enabler of the female synergy, where she'll offer female commanders, including herself, a percentage chance of recasting their active abilities. And this is of course very sought after due to the likes of Annie, Marjorie, Arya, Cersei, effectively gaining you damage beyond just the normal active damage itself because of their special synergy effects attached to their four stars. A weapon, like with Jamie and Sonara also, is only obtainable through the archery contest. This makes it very difficult to obtain and puts it at a very high pay bracket. The rough maths I attributed to unlocking Jamie's weapon was you will on average get about 75 fragments per 4,000 black diamonds for the weapon you're after in the archery contest. The issue of that is that is giving it 33 fragments as an average for the full weapon chest. So if you're deliberately chasing a specific weapon, so if you're playing as a female build and you specifically want Layla's weapon, you could keep getting unlucky and keep hitting Jamie and Sonara's weapon from the big chest. Which means if you want to guarantee unlocking it even to base, you could need to spend upwards of eight to 12,000 black diamonds at once to ensure that you unlock it. Its base attributes are specific to cavalry, so that means you can only get cavalry base attack on its random attributes and other cavalry specific stats. This is a bit of an awkward situation as I'll go into a bit later in the video due to female being a very flexible build and you can run female in although it's not necessarily optimal but you can definitely run female spears and more specifically female bows as well female is the best synergy for bows but you can't get bow base attack on this weapon so you'll have to decide potentially between base attack and synergy if you're running cav female it's obviously a very Simple decision, there's not really a choice that needs to be made, it's just good in every way for you. But to help justify those more tricky situations, I have everything specific to Layla's weapon listed out in the private Discord channel here. So I have every stage of her ability, and then how it's affected by each stage of the weapon. So 0 stars, 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, and 4 star. As you gain stars on the weapon, the percentage chances of her recasting effect of actives will steadily be increased as you go down. And I have all of them listed out in full here. And then I've used those maths to show things on a bit more of a wider scale as well. So as I list at the top here, the maths shown here are not necessarily gospel. They are not necessarily entirely mathematically accurate because you're attributing values to each of the reproc chances, but you can't have them all proc simultaneously. So they're sequenced in the percentage chances. So I don't know which way it goes from, whether it's the 45 here or the 8% that goes first, but it will be, say, for example, an 8% chance of the active being cast four times rather than one. If that doesn't proc, then it will be a 20% chance afterwards of it being used three times if neither of them proc. Then it will be a separate 45% chance to be cast two times. And then if none of those three proc, it will be obviously a 100% chance to cast just once. So you can of course get unlucky here and it just not proc. But mathematically I am giving them all values here. And even if it's not necessarily mathematically accurate, you can see the trend, and I think it's a good visual representation either way. And the trend in the maths is very clear. Either way, you can see pretty much every interval, it goes up by about 0.1 times actives. So a base 4-star commander will use their actives once every time it casts, obviously. That's just the base value. If you're female and there's a 4-star Layla in your lineup, then it will, on average, be 1.59 
active casts each time you use one, and then it goes to 1.69, then 1.79, and so on and so on. The jumps up divert a little bit from that whole number of 0.1, but it's still close enough, and there's a very clear correlation of how many more active castings you're going to be getting as you increase the stars on your layer weapon. So base 4-star commanders will, on default, use their actives at 11, 21, 30, and 40 seconds. So it's four times in a fight. This will be the same even if you have Salma there. If you have Salma with a female commander, unless they're 4-star Daenerys, they will not cast at 40 seconds. So casting at 1 second is effectively losing you out on that 40 second active casting. I don't know why it works that way. It just does if you look at reports. My theory is it sequences the fifth, what would be the fifth active, to 41 seconds, and then the fight ends. It could be that, it could just be that there's a limit of four actives in a fight, but then Daenerys being able to cast five times wouldn't make sense, so I'm pretty sure it just sequences it to cast at 41, and the fight ends. But because of these four actives of fight, you can then multiply these numbers up by four to get what each commander will give you, in terms of average active castings across a fight according to each stage. And then of course you have five commanders. So if you have five female commanders, then you can map out across a whole fight what you will on average be getting across those five commanders as far as active castings go. And of course the more active castings you're getting with this synergy specifically, you're both getting the damage from those actives, but ideally you're also gaining benefits from other means as well through Synergy. So you'll be stacking Arya's Death Marker debuff more, you'll be getting more disarms from Marjorie, more disarms from Daenerys potentially, more damage from Annie's 4-star, and if you have 4-star Cersei, all of them combine to helping to provide more wildfire procs through Cersei as well. I think this is the most important part of these maps. So you see... Five four-star commanders will, by default, cast 20 actives for our fight. Just having four-star Layla alone with five females will take that up to 31.8. So it's a jump of 11.8 actives. And then pretty much near enough, every star on the weapon you get, if you assume a yeah, base is zero stars, will jump up by two active castings across your formation through the fight. So it goes to 31.8, 33.8, 35.8, bit more of a jump at 2 star, which makes the jump from 1 star to 2 star the biggest jump of all. And then it goes a little bit below that number of 2, but you're losing 0.2 there, 0.2 there, and you gained 0.4 there. So on average, it's plus 2 active castings at every stage of the weapon. That means the jump from no synergy at all to four star Layla with five females is almost equivalent value from four star Layla gaining a four star Layla weapon as well, which is of course a huge leap because you're effectively doubling your synergy or the effect of your synergy enabler more specifically. So some weapons out there have a, a bigger percentage leap in their effect on that, like Seg's weapon for example is beyond that, but Layla's effect is of course so good that doubling that default effect is a huge leap, and it probably goes without saying that having a four-star weapon in a full female composition will add huge amounts of damage and synergy, and will be a, a total no-brainer for any female player if they can afford it. Where I think the decision is a bit more difficult, as I alluded to earlier, is if you're only spending to a level where you're just going to get it to zero stars so you're just unlocking it and keeping it at base you'll only be gaining two active castings on average throughout the fight across your entire formation which is good and you can visualize two active castings if you're mono at least as somewhere a little bit over 500 percent commander damage which will be about one second of normal attacks if you're taking out counter bonuses out of the equation, but would that value surpass, if you're say running bow female, uh, five, six, seven bow base attack on 
Kravras's weapon, or Fionn's weapon, or any weapon, or Seg weapon, or Julian weapon, or anything else you can get base stack on for that non-cav unit. Realistically, I don't think it, it would be better than that. So if you're running cav, it's a total no-brainer. If you're a full whale, it's a total no-brainer. If you're a mid-spender and running imp, spear, or bow female, especially considering the cost it would require to even get it to base, I'm not sure the synergy benefits, long-term especially, will outscale trying to source five forms of base tag for your lineup. Because unless you're lucky with your arrows in the archery contest, the BD it would require to get this could get you multiple total attack weapons, a bunch of reforge or to, to throw at it to try and get bow base tag or something. And I, I do think at that lower level, it's not necessarily that higher priority. On that note of reforging weapons as well, this is what you'll be able to get on Layla's weapon, so it can roll up to 11 base attack, but it's locked into cavalry, as I said. There'll be 100 reforge ore per roll, and if you're locking stats in it, it'll be 200 locking ore for the first stat you lock, then 600 for the second, and then 1,800 for the third, which is insanely expensive. And that is pretty much it. That is everything you need to know about Layla's weapon. Yeah.